Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a satisfying Saturday. Let's learn, let's grow. Today is day 100 of our one-to-one -one day journey, Mark. Congratulations to all of us who've come to this 100-day journey. A big shout of thanks to each one of you for being here diligently, actively every morning. And now we have three weeks of creation, 21 days left. And these three weeks, I can promise you, are going to be most magical because by now all of us are trained into this new world of harmony, of abundance. So more power to everyone. And a quick shout of thanks to the Catalyst and Boosters and to the Sanghas. Please invite your, you know, your buddies, your Sangha Mitras who have kind of left the journey. Tell them last three weeks come now. It doesn't matter where they've left. It's always a new beginning. So invite them, get them back. They have paid up. They have got the journals. Even these three weeks are going to be most amazing. So they'll get back on track. So I definitely tell you, do let us know um, if they are all coming back and motivate them. Come and thank you for everyone who's registered for Miracles. I saw Asmeet had posted his registration form. So fantastic. I saw Shelly's registered. Amazing. So I keep, I really am looking forward to seeing all of you joining us at Miracles. Now, without further ado, let's start our Pixel programming, where each one of us is affirming for our manifestations, believing in them, and running towards them. So it is. Let's start. Today, Rahul sir is hosting the session. Today is his day one. So I wish him the very best. I'm sure he's going to do a great, great, great job. So congratulations, Rahul sir. And Ritesh sir, thank you for hand-holding the entire team. Thank you so much. All right, let's have the music. The Pixit music. Okay, till the time he's playing the music. Thank you so much, Rahul, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, life is magical and we all win this game of life. So Rahul, sir, we generally tend to do it for two minutes, one minute and one minute, but I think you made it two minutes together. So I'm not sure. Anyways, we'll talk about it. So thank you, everyone. We can now enjoy ourselves in this beautiful book reading session. Can I have somebody volunteer to read today? And uh, we are going to be doing absolute magical stuff now. Let's see what's coming our way. We'll begin with magic weight loss pill. And yesterday I'd uh, requested Karishma to kind of be our mentor, guide, and kind of analyze it all and make us a program. I will be talking to her on a personal level to bring to you all a lifestyle practice like which you can all do. Of course, you have your Abhi Preeti with you. You can journal in that and we will be bringing a lot our way. So we have spoken about sedentary to active lifestyle. Today, we're going to talk about that evening snack. So yes, Sanya. 
Mm, Rahul, sir, you can make Sanya the co-host. Yes, thank you. She's already there. How wonderful is that? That's fast. Amazing. Let's have the first book for the day, uh, Rahul, sir, which is The Magic Weight Loss Pill. And until the book comes on screen, let's remember one quick thing. That evening snack, which we're talking about, is a science today that you and I will be studying. And in that, there will come a couple of things. And if possible, please only stick to that. Today, we will be reading three chapters in this morning session. Very one one paragraph long sessions. And we shall be understanding the science of this uh, entire thing. So can you kind of finish off the excesses? We can see the background as well. Just the book needs to be seen. So maybe your viewing can be like that. We can see your um, desktop portion as well. Nonetheless, until you figure it out, we can start reading your chapter. So Sanya, please start. Uh, lifestyle number 37, that evening snack. So yes, let's go. Good forward. morning. Good morning. That evening snack. Most people feel hungry and tired three to four hours after lunch. And if at that time you don't eat the right snack, Cravings set in and dinner, dinners become massive in terms of portions. The snack that I found helped people lose weight was a bowl of raw mixed sprouts with onion, tomato and lemon. Make sure to sprout them 24 hours earlier. In the morning, it takes exactly four minutes to put the rest together. In case you do not like sprouts, other snacking options are fruits, nuts and seeds, homemade energy bars, or granola. Very important to understand. No, so let's keep at that pace. Sir. So now it's very important to understand that these mixed sprouts we're talking about is just your simple basic sprouts. I will say don't even boil them because you're going to kill the nourishment. And Luke very strongly says, just sprout them 24 hours earlier. So if you start aligning your staff, your cooks or you know yourself, you can just sprout a bit every day. It will be ready at the same time. Maximum two days, not more than two days because otherwise they, they keep sprouting a lot more. But they, they sometimes they say that it, it loses some important vitamins. To have a sprout salad, like a bowl of sprout salad, is very nourishing, very beautiful, very fulfilling. My babe, my son has been having that for a long time because his mom is super, super healthy. So she's giving him that every evening. Or it's a fruit, or it's nuts and seeds, or it's homemade energy bars or granola. There's nothing all called a fifth item. So if you can have any one of these in moderate quantity, you would not want to binge eat for dinner and your cravings will not come in. And this really helps people lose weight. In fact, many a times when people have this meal, like I've seen with me, I don't feel the need to eat dinner. And then I avoid dinner because of the body saying it doesn't need, why should I give it to her? Because of my old conditioning. So yes, thank you so much. Let's move on to the fact number 38, lifestyle number 38 on the next page. Now it's again a follow-up of what we've done. So if you're eating a sprout at per se, the sprout time could be anything like four-ish, okay? Not like a typical chai time five, or if you want to have, then it's fine. Eat dinner early. Now, a lot of you who have followed Luke would know about the circadian rhythm. For those who don't know, uh, sun ke sab se cycle chalti hai. Jainism mein to yehi follow karte hai. As the sun rises, body ki urja energy rise karti hai. As the sun sets, body, body ki energy set kar jati hai. It cannot, it doesn't have any longer the digestion fire. So it can't digest your food. That's why they say eat dinner early. Jainism is a very, very scientific based religion with very good practices. Some of them are really good. So this is also about that. The earlier you eat, the better it is because that's how the power of this is. So let's read about this. Yes, Sanya. Eat dinner early. This is my favorite and one of the most powerful lifestyle changes for weight loss. India eats dinner too late. The heaviest meal in India is usually dinner. Understandably so, because after a long day at work, the, families like, the family likes to sit together and eat their favorite food. But that comes with the consequences, consequence of weight gain, acidity, and indigestion. At, a gap of at least three hours is required before dinner and bedtime. I subscribe to the practice of eating your last meal before sunset, traditionally followed by the Jain community. If you can't eat early, at least eat light. Your body needs more protein and fat at dinner than carbs because that is what it will use for its functions while you sleep. If you get hungry later, drink vegetable juice or eat some yogurt or homemade popcorn, never microwave popcorn 
that's really bad for you and your weight. Okay, so quick question, Rahul sir and Ritesh sir. Uh, is the recording live on YouTube? I see a recording option, but not live on YouTube. So I don't think we've gone live. Just see if that's not working. Otherwise, you can figure out your end. It will become too heavy a file to upload later. That's why I just thought I'll let you know. So very, very important. When Sanya has read what she's read, let's understand why is this being said. Now, if I eat my dinner at 8 and if I sleep at 9, 30, 10, it's really fatal. Why? Because my body needs three hours. And if I eat at eight and I sleep at 11, okay, I've given the three hours. But these three hours, the body can't really digest food because the digestion fire is not there. So please get that very clear. That is the reason why it's a good idea to have like a heavyish meal at about six-ish. Like you have your, if you want, like I avoid my evening food sometimes. And if I Avoid that I have dinner straight away at that time rather than having my sprouts or the sprouts you can't spend enough. So if I am hungry, which I'm never hungry, if I am at times, it's good to have your cucumber juice. It's good to have your tomato juice. It's good to have any kind of bottle of juice or any kind of vegetables juice, not a fruit juice. Because fruit is high on sucrose, is high on sugar. So get that very clear. If you want to have a healthy life, you want to sleep well, you know, you'll realize that your sleep is very deep. So if you're wearing a smartwatch and if you're having such light dinner and you see in the morning when you wake up, it's absolute dark blue because you've had a very beautiful sleep. But if you've had a heavy meal, you'll be tossing and turning and your body will not be able to digest. So that is why they say eat light and do not eat heavy. <coughs> It'll help you in your acidity, in digestion, everything. Now, one more thing about microwave is use minimalistic microwave as much as possible ovens are fine you want to heat something ovens are okay gas is perfectly all right but microwave is not really advisable for anything either it's popcorn or it's anything so we've been told that if you can have drink vegetable juice or we can even have some yogurt which is high on probiotics or we can have homemade popcorn which you somebody will say oh wow and homemade popcorn will not mean too much of butter and it'll just mean homemade popcorn and if you have salt at that time you may retain it so think about it before you think of oh yes luke says homemade popcorn so let's go for it no it's not very very advisable now, fact number 39, for the ones who are married or the ones who have partners and not my children who are studying with me, and this is not for children, okay? So don't take it so literally, butchers. But elders, yes, have more sex. Why do we say so? What is the reason? Let's understand this. It's not just about your physicality. It's also about you know, emotional being. So let's read about it. What connection does this have with your weight? Having more sex is like also a great way to move from a sedentary to an active lifestyle. Plus, it keeps you happy, assuming it is safe and satisfying and works as a massive stress buster. As certain sex hormones are produced during the act, the cortisol level falls. Sex is good for your metabolic activity and burns calories as well. It can help you have a good night of deep sleep which you know is extremely important for fat burn and weight loss. Disconnect from your gadgets at least one hour before bed. That will help with the production of more melatonin. Don't know what to do in that one hour? Make love. Keep it safe and respectful. So how wonderful. So it's very simple. Firstly, you'll be happy. Happy uh, hormones are released. You'll be able to sleep much better. Your metabolic activity will get charged up. And when you sleep, the charged up metabolic activity will help in burning more calories. Vis-a-vis, -vis, you just sleep like that. Vis-a-vis -vis, uh, or comparison with after a good session of making love, it's going to be absolutely amazing. So this is very, and a lot of, sorry to be talking about this so boldly and openly, but in India, the culture is very strange. Uh, people are making love only very, very rarely because do not know why people don't know how to express love. But it is very beautiful to express love. And it's nice to just cuddle and sleep, but it's very beautiful to have that connection. Now, when you're having sex, it's actually a deep, soulful connection. It's not just your mind and body, it's also your soul. So, and you know, you will realize after a while that you and your spouse, your partner, whether you're two males, you're two females, whether you're a man or a woman, whoever you are, you will be connecting at a much deeper level because your souls are connecting every single day. So though you, the soul is acquiring a body as a vehicle, yet it's very important for the vehicle to be all the time oiled and machined and, you know, 
taken care of. So please be careful about this, that if you are in a lackless love, get love back in and it's beautiful to do it. And gadgets, we've spoken about this many a times. It's very important to detach yourself from gadgets. I had been strictly following two hours, three hours at six o'clock, seven o'clock. Gadgets will go off morning, seven o'clock, they'll go on. But these days, too much of creative juices are flowing and I'm unable to keep myself off gadgets. And that's the way my quality of sleep has also reduced. So I'm going to work on this and promise yourself that so will you. If you switch off the gadgets and keep them a little distant away, you won't even get those um, frequencies. So remember, gadgets are always sending our vibrations and frequencies. You don't want to be in that radar. So keep it a little far, not like a handful distance, at least about five feet away from your body, because that way you will not, you'll have a peaceful sleep. Get this, because imagine it's catching vibrations. That's why it's, it's working, right? So you don't want those, those uh, rays. So please, please, please. It's a very uh, request. Try and go off gadgets. I promise I'm going to be back at it of not being on gadgets. So amazing. Thank you, Rahul, sir, for showcasing the first book for the day. It's time to move on to the power of now. I'm very proud of him. The first session, not bad. Very, very good. We'll get better every single day. Today is day 100. Also, the date is 21st, a date of good beginning. And imagine on this wonderful date, 21, 21 days are left for our journey to complete. So I will say once the journey is complete, it's not a completion, it's a beginning of all of us to live a life of abundance. So that is the power of today. So with this beautiful intention, two plus one is also equal to three. So we have three weeks left. It's very, no wonder synchronicity has happened. This is, now this is an example of synchronicity. So if we are in this picture together, now, now we keep seeing in the artist's way, she says, have you seen any synchronicity? This is an example. The date is 21, 21 days to go. Two plus one is equal to three, three weeks to go. Today is 100th day and today is when Rahul joins in on 21st when his birthday is also 21st December. So things are happening in alignment, right? And this is what we call synchronicity. So please start watching out for this magical beginnings in your life. Uh, Rahul, so can we in increase the page a bit? It's kind of small in the, uh, you know, I can see a lot of background. So can you enlarge it a bit? You know, I can see the white screen, which is not covering the full screen. So it's right now the font is a bit smaller, but it's not possible. Don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll crack this out. I'm sure Ritesh the Sanjay sir will help you. Uh, now we we'll, we'll move on to this beautiful book. And we've enjoyed the silence yesterday. We've spoken to each other and ourselves. What are we getting into, right? Today is about realizing our consciousness is raising a level higher. So please get this very, very clear that each one of us is developing our being. By the way, tomorrow is a full moon. I'm going to be scheduling a call in the evening and I will be sending the flyers. It's a very beautiful ascension again for our consciousness tomorrow. Uh, the date is 22nd. It's an August blue moon. It comes with a lot of sanctity and with a lot of beginnings. So we'll talk about that tomorrow, but keep yourself free in the second half. And if not, of course, they'll be recording on YouTube and you can always go and see live. You don't have to have access for it. It'll be free for all. So yes, silence is what we're going to talk about now after silence. So Karishma, oh, sorry, Sanya, over to you. Page number 84, when consciousness. When consciousness frees itself from its identification with physical and mental forms, it becomes what we may call pure or enlightened consciousness or presence. This has already happened in a few individuals and it seems destined to happen soon on a much larger scale. Although there is no absolute guarantee that it will happen, most humans are still in the grip of the egoic mode of consciousness identified with their mind and run by their mind. If they do not free themselves from, the, from their mind in time, they will be destroyed by it. They will experience increasing confusion, conflict, violence, illness, despair, madness. Egoic mind has become like a sinking ship. If you don't get off, you'll go down with it. The collective egoic mind is the most dangerously insane and destruct destructive entity ever to inhabit this planet. What do you think will happen on this planet if human consciousness remains unchanged. 
Wonderful. So uh, now just a quick answer. I've got a pop-up chat. So if you're not able to see the book very clearly, please uh, go on the right side where there's a view option, go on the standard option. And the standard op option, the book automatically will enlarge and you know your viewership will become a little smaller. So please do that for today. I'm sure we'll be able to figure out something very soon. So don't you worry. All right. So now the question today, the entire section is about when consciousness frees itself from its identification with physical, mental forms, it becomes what we may call pure or enlightened consciousness or presence. What does this mean? I no longer identify myself with physical or mental being or people with physical and mental being. All of a sudden, I feel it's energy, everyone's energy, everything is energy. And that is when the masters have transcended to the realms above and they be called enlightened because they just feel there's nothing but everything in this moment. And this moment is all about energy, it's all about oneness, it's all about embracing the now. And in that now, when you're present, one to one percent present when you are, that is when your consciousness is getting free from all kinds of limitations. It's becoming the next level, it's ascending to the next level. And when this happens to individuals, it seems destined to happen soon on a much larger scale, which means if it happens to two of us here, we're going to have a ripple effect. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to tell you how the first Sangha worked. We were 78 of us, I think, in the first Sangha. How we came up, we had no idea. We were in the evening sessions and how one plus one, we just kept coming up and we, we started with like one to one days. Of course, many dropouts were there because they were not ready for the ascension. They paid up, but they did not come up. Similarly, the separate two. So those people invited their loved ones or who they thought would need this and they came in the second batch. So everyone's consciousness was increasing, right? Now, when my consciousness is increasing, I realize, okay, I am the light worker. I need to share my knowledge, right? Or I need to translate these books. Similarly, now if Sanya has had a ascension on consciousness and she feels, okay, these one-to-one -one days helped me. And this lady or the gentleman needs this as well, or they're bent towards this. Let me invite them for the first 12 days of the preview session. All of us know the money is going for a charity. It's not going through anybody's pocket, right? So what's happening is now, this is what this line is talking about. It seems destined to happen soon on a much larger scale. So each one of us is making the scale larger. And that is why humanity or the beings, the consciousness is raising. Why did I say the word humanity? Because right now we're human beings. So now there's ascension happening. Very important. So if you have animals who sit around with you and hear the session, even their consciousness is increasing. There is one of you, I forgot. She says her dog is all the time glued on the session. That's because a dog can hear, whether you realize or not, his uh, consciousness is also raising. Although there is absolutely no guarantee that it will happen. So yes, now two of you may feel ki, oh, maza aya, sikha. Lekin yaar, log bolengi, yo, mad kya karti rati ho, main to kisi ko share ne karungi. Because you are closed. So it may not happen. And that's also okay. Don't judge yourself. If you don't want that to happen, don't judge yourself. Most humans are still in the grip of the egoic mind. I, me, and I am. I will not do this. 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 No. Our work, our work, whatever you want to call it, is just to share our light. That's it. If somebody is meant to come, they will come. If they're not meant to come, they will not come. Even after 12 days of session, they will be like, you know, they're procrastinating and that's fine. All of us know we're doing seva. So together as a sung when we're studying, we know 10% of our sessions are also seva. Anyone and everyone can hear. Just go English so much. By large, so the first batch, we only spoke English because we had so many people from South of India who were not very comfortable with Hindi. So, you know, it was only English. In the second batch, we have some people who are Hindi spoken. And others are all Hindi spoken well. So we have been doing a pretty much a English session, 80% English, 20% Hindi. So it again resonates on what's happening where. So don't make false promises that, you know, Samaj mein aa jayega. but the people who've been in Hindi, they've really elevated their English also. So yeah, ascension is happening. We're learning something new. Now let's understand what is happening with the egoic mind. Our ego is telling us, don't do this, don't do that. I mean, and that's okay. If you're identified with that and letting that run your mind even now, that's okay. Your journey probably will take a bit more. 
don't judge yourself again just flow if you can free yourself from it very good if you can't free yourself from it it's okay so they say if they do not free themselves from the mind in time they will be destroyed by it so if your ego is going to be driving you you will not be a spiritual person and you'll get destroyed completely they you will so they talk about they and I'll, i'll use a generic word they they will experience increasing confusion conflict violence illness despair madness so all these negative emotions again i'm saying the word labeling the word negative because there's lack of love in all these aspects so which is why they're becoming not conducive to our learning the egoic mind has become like a sinking ship it will take you down if you don't get off it you will go down with it like a titanic went down even you will go down so you have to go off the ship into a world of no ego the collective egoic mind is a most dangerously insane and destructive entity ever to inhabit this planet so if you imagine five heads of egoistic minds oh my god kahan jayega world so and five heads of non egoistic people kahan jayega world you see for yourself you can think about it kai log they'll share the light and the, they'll be ascension kai log they'll share the darkness and they'll be downfall so this is how life is what do you think will happen in this planet if human consciousness remains unchanged agar aap aur main human consciousness ko change nahi kare kya hoga the environment will become more toxic our bodies will become more toxic um, they'll be we'll be talking negative about politics about government about families about books about people about institutions about organizations so what will happen worst mother earth is suffering she'll suffer so much so much more but the good news is this is not going to happen where in the dwapar yug there is energy shift that's the reason so much of energy sessions are coming that's the reason why the pandemic came because it had to make the world a global village if the pandemic had not come zoom would not have come you and me would not have been right now i don't know how many are here, people are here from non india in the first batch we had eight students from five planets uh, so five, five continents so because we come a global village anybody anytime anywhere so that's why things are changing next paragraph let's read it already for most humans the only respite they find from their own minds is to occasionally revert to a level of consciousness below thought everyone does that every night during sleep but this also happens to some extent through sex alcohol and other drugs that suppress excessive mind activity if it weren't for alcohol tranquilizers antidepressants as well as the illegal drugs which are all consumed in vast quantities the insanity of the human mind would become even more glaringly obvious than it is already i believe that if deprived of their drugs a large part of the population would become a danger to themselves and others these drugs of course you sim- simply keep you stuck in dysfunction their widespread use only delays the breakdown of the old mind structures and the emergence of higher consciousness while individual users may get some relief from their daily torture inflicted on them by their minds they are prevented from generating enough conscious presence to rise above the th- above thought and to find true liberation okay let's sum up briefly so already all of us know that we are on an ascension we are raising our consciousness now what's happening is so now there's this line which has come to me uh, i'll again talk about this but everyone does that every night during sleep you raise your consciousness it's just about thoughts now this also happens in sex alcohol other drugs now which kind of sex are they talking about the aggressive one which is not safe sex right it's not making love so don't confuse when luke cortino says and you say oh but yahan to ye likha hua hai so this is what you over we, we talked about sex is making love like a soft version not aggressive aggressive get, will get your energy up so now if these things weren't there these illegal stuff uh, these drugs antidepressants if all of this no, was not there what would happen life would be better because people will not get used to these these are meant for you to become addicts and that's what is happening so if we have to go for a better life we have to understand we have to be in functioning in a higher level there should be widespread use of good stuff in not the negative stuff and that good stuff is reading the good stuff is 
good company, spirituality, enjoying what we do maximum, loving what we do, living life with, with pleasure and fun. And that will also help us in ascension. Uh, individuals are going to do that if we are realizing and releasing our negativity and going towards liberation, we will find that nonetheless, come what may, it is inevitable. Let's read the next paragraph, please. Falling back to a level of consciousness below mind, which is the pre-thinking level of our distant ancestors and of animals and plants is not an option for us. There is no way back. If the human race is to survive, it will have to go on to the next stage. Consciousness is evolving throughout the universe in billions of forms. So even if we didn't make it, this wouldn't matter on a cosmic scale. No gain in consciousness is ever lost. So it would simply express itself through some other form. But the very fact that I'm speaking here and you are listening or reading, this is a clear sign that the new consciousness is gaining a foothold on the planet. How wonderful, right? That's what we said. Ascension is happening. It's inevitable. So we're all working on it. Whether we realize or not, we are working. So much so, you know, uh, animals and plants are also going to put it as I discussed. Well. Now we can't retract our steps. We're just going ahead and ahead because we are evolving in billions of forms. How wonderful. Next paragraph, please. If anybody wants me to elaborate on something, let me know because it's simple English. This didn't need too much of translation, so I didn't. But if anybody, please feel free to either private pop-up or a group message. Yes, please. There is nothing personal in this. I'm not teaching, teaching you. You are consciousness and you are listening to yourself. This is an Eastern saying. There is an Eastern saying, the teacher and the taught together create the teaching. In any case, the words in themselves are not important. They are not the truth. They only point to it. I speak from presence. And as I speak, you may be able to join me in that state. Although every word that I use has a history, of course, and comes from the past, as all language does. The words that I speak to you now are carriers of the high energy frequency of presence quite apart from the meaning they convey as words. Okay, so very important to understand that all of us are in this journey where we are being, we are teachable and we are taught. And I, we teach also and we learn also. All of us are seekers. What does seeker mean? We are seeking something and that's fine. So if we are teachable, then of course teachings will come our way. If we are ready to gain information, we are going to gain. And if you're listeners, we will gain a lot of information. So now, if we are together in this journey of learning, reading, understanding, we're reaching a beautiful truth and we are finding our presence. And that is making us so much, so much beautiful. So congratulations, everyone, for being in a high energy frequency zone. And you're literally, literally killing it. You're slaying it. And that's I'm so proud of all of you. So, okay, Anju, the, mess, the word I'm using is ascension. The spelling would be A-S-C-E-N-T-I-O-N. -E ascension is to elevate yourself. So Mother Earth is going through ascension. So ascension is also used by people who are climbing up mountains or basically ascending up. Even flights are ascending up, right? So that's what it is the word ascension. So all of us are embracing ascension we are we are facing it we are feeling it but you know uh, we are going on our next level and that's beautiful so are you feeling ascension now if now that you know the meaning how many of you are feeling the ascension and how your energy has shifted it's gone into a higher level you're no longer criticizing complaining or you have become better 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 so we are all going towards ascension and mother, when imagine all of us are, Mother Earth has had a shift. So you may say, I'm one in trillions of people. How does it count? No, it counts. Every drop in the ocean counts, whether you realize or not. Rumi says, you're not the uh, ocean, you're not the ocean in the drop, you're the drop in the ocean. So you just see, you, in you is the entire ocean. You are where you are. You are so beautiful. You're so amazing. Yes, and now we'll talk about the value of uh, ascension. Yes, Parishma, that's right, that's the word. Silence, let's talk about it. Silence is even more potent carrier of presence. So when you read this or listen to me speak, 
Be aware of the silence between and underneath the words. Be aware of the gaps. To listen to the silence wherever you are is an easy and direct way of becoming present. Even if there is noise, there's always some silence underneath and in between the words. Listening to the silence immediately creates stillness inside you. Only the stillness in you can perceive the silence outside. And what is stillness other than presence? Consciousness freed from thought forms. Here is the living realization of what we have been talking about. All right, so let's stay on this page, so let's not change. Now silence is so powerful. And silence is a time when you will realize the power of your presence. I'll give you an example of this paragraph. Yesterday, I'd gone to the salon to get my uh, hair oil. I just reached 2.30 and the, the, the man had just taken up oil and put it here. And immediately I got a pop-up message from Prashant that we lost uh, Prashant's first cousin. He was 44. And he went exactly the way my brother had left. Alcoholism and then the body parts failing. And we, we could see he was going. But Prashant and I won't try to embrace the fact that he's going, has a young seven, eight year old son, a young wife under 40s. So we weren't prepared to see and she lost her brother the same time and lost my brother. So I was like, no, she can't lose her only brother and the only, like everyone has only one husband. So I was like, this is not going to happen to her. Some magic will happen and he'll be okay. So, you know, when I, when I heard that, rather than freaking out, I just closed my eyes and sat on the chair. I, I just told him to just lay off. And that time also I felt silence and I felt my breath and I just felt the gap between my breath and I realized, okay, this is life. Bhaiya could not go for the ascension. So that is why in this pandemic, people are losing. Of course, we didn't lose him to COVID. No, we didn't. But people are leaving Mother Earth because they're not ready for the ascension. So if somebody is leaving this Mother Earth rather than mourn, and of course, you will cry. You will feel bad. You, you can't not do that. You're human. You have emotions. But learn to say Om Sadgadi. May you have good gati when you go up. May you be in good company. May you rise higher. Because ultimately, he will reincarnate. The soul will reincarnate. So please try and brace that thing about you. Please try and see the gaps between the silence. So if you start being in silence, and if you see your breath going up and down, you realize when you're deep breathing, there comes a very fraction, small second of a gap when you again exhale. Again, there's a gap, again, there's inhale. So learn to look at these gaps, be become aware of them. Start listening to silence. So why do I keep saying, listen, listen, listen? Because you have to listen. My mother-in-law used to call my father-in-law, listen. She never said frame, she never said PK, she said, listen. So I was like, okay, listen. So start listening to your mind, start listening to your body, start listening to your soul, because listening is a beautiful art. Start speaking a bit lesser, talk, listening a bit more, and then you will become even a better friend, a parent, a partner, whoever you wish to be. Even yesterday, I remember in the salon, there was noise. There was some lady getting, in a distant way, getting a blue drive, something done, yet I could feel the silence. Why? Because ultimately you can still yourself. Listen to silence immediately creates stillness inside you. And that is very beautiful. It's very profound. Learn this, understand this, imbibe this, value it. Now, the living realization of what we have been talking about is exactly this. That's why I give an example to realize that people say, nay, silence, nay, I can't, I, I can't listen. Oh, I can't go into dhyan. You can. I experienced that also yesterday. Let's turn the page, Rahul, sir. Thank you. Okay, now let's go for the silence because we've talked about this and we've come to silence. So again, close your eyes, everyone. I live in the power of now, embracing silence and learning to listen. Listen to my mind, my body, my soul. I am a listener, so it is. Thank you, everyone. This next section we're going to talk about is about Christ, the reality of your divine presence. So, okay, so those of you who are not Jews, Catholics, those of you who are not a Catholic, I think nobody is a Catholic here, do not think it as a religious um, 
usage. Whenever you see Christ, you can substitute if you're a Buddhist, Buddha, if you're Hindu, any of your gods that you believe in, if you're a Muslim, Prophet Muhammad, any, basically it's not a Bhagwan. It's, it's just a symbolic version of who you believe in. So don't get this wrong that it said Christ. No, it's not about that. But let's, uh, let's read it the way it is. I understand, construe ourselves into a different way. But here, why it's Christ is because his examples are going to be given in this section. It's very beautiful. So please read. Christ, the reality of your divine presence. How beautiful. Don't get attached to any word. You can substitute Christ for presence if that is more meaningful to you. Christ is your God essence or the self, as it is sometimes called in the East. The only difference between Christ and presence is that Christ refers to your indwelling in divinity regardless of whether you are conscious of it or not. Whereas presence means your awakened divinity or God essence. I hope you're clear about this. Presence means that I'm right now still, I'm present to the power of now and I'm aware and I'm awakening every single day to divinity or the God essence. We all know this, there's some one supreme power. So that divine power is that we are right now witnessing. Yes, please. Many misunderstandings and false beliefs about Christ will clear if you realize that there is no past or future in Christ. To say that Christ was or will be is a contradiction in terms. Jesus was. He was a man who lived 2000 years ago and realized divine presence, his true nature. And so he said, before Abraham was, I am. He did not say I already existed before Abraham was born. That, that would have meant that he was still within the dimension of time and form identity. The words I am, used in a sentence that starts in the past tense indicate a radical shift, a discontinuity in the temporal dimension. It is a Zen-like statement of great profundity. Jesus attempted to convey directly, not through discursive thought, the meaning of presence, of self-realization. He had gone beyond the consciousness dimension governed by time into the realm of the timeless. One second. Do you realize how beautiful this word is? Jesus or the power had gone beyond the consciousness of awareness, presence, dimension, which is governed by time, the power of now, we talk about time, into the time of the timeless. So he had even taken away the boundary of time and gone timeless. What is timelessness? When we just feel that, oh, time is just flown by, there's, there's nothing, it just flew. And that is beautiful. Yes, please continue. The dimension of eternity had come into this world. Eternity, of course, does not mean endless time, but no time. Thus, the man Jesus became Christ, a vehicle for pure consciousness. And what is God's self-definition in the Bible? Did God say, I have always been and I always will be? Of course not. That would have given reality to past and future. God said, I am that I am. No time here, just presence. Yes, it's beautiful. No time, just presence. So yes, Asmeet, I have had timelessness and I'll tell you when. So when I was uh, in my hotel check-in, uh, the out of office given by Rahul sir, Morning, I checked in the hotel at about 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. And Prashant called me up at about 9.30 p.m. asking that had I had anything to eat. And I forgot. The time just flew by. I didn't even realize it's become 13, 14 hours. So timelessness. And there was one time I was meditating. I'd gone for Vipassana for 11 days. And um, surprisingly, these people did not. So I was in the pagoda there. And uh, you're supposed to be there for two hours. And the person just come, kept coming and seeing me. And I was there for 14 hours. I didn't realize night had gone by. I was just meditating. And she was like, we keep coming and seeing and we can't break your sadhana. And it's never happened ever before. I didn't realize 14 hours went by. I was sitting, but of course I had, so the pagodas have a triangle kind of a room. So I did have, so I, after a point of time, I did remember taking my gaddi piche 
and putting my back support. But uh, I, I don't know. So timelessness does happen. It's absolutely profound. I remember, I don't remember now what happened, but it was very, very, very deep. So I think this happened to me on the ninth day when I was there. So it was a total 11 day program. Ninth day, I felt that. So the night became, the evening became night, became morning and I was still there. So yeah. Yes, please. Let's continue. The second coming of Christ is the transformation of human consciousness, a shift from time to presence, from thinking to pure consciousness, not the arrival of some man or woman. If Christ were to return tomorrow in some externalized form, what could he or she possibly say to you other than this? I am the truth. I am divine presence. I am internal, eternal life. I am within you. I am here. I am now. Wow. So this is very beautiful. So now it's a transformation of human consciousness which is happening. We are shifting from time to presence. We're thinking about right now being in the present. We're thinking to pure consciousness, fully aware. And now is the time for all of us to return home. Home is where the power lives. Where all of us know I'm here, I'm now. I'm the truth and I am divine presence. So when Yudhendra Saraogi you said that, you know, that I have divine guidance and that is what is ruling all of us, whether we know it or not. We're saying I'm eternal life because life is eternal. We, the, the, the soul may change bodies, but it's eternal being. So it's very important to realize that this is happening. So this happened with me when I, I just spoke about that meditation with Pashna, right? So, you know, when I uh, was going for that, before that, two days prior to that, I was so numbed with negativity from my peers in my organization. I was a vice president of one organization at one time. And the peers were full of negativity because I was a radical thinker. In five years, I'd come there. People hadn't come in 15. So there's a lot of, you know, like a lot of things and I couldn't handle it. So, you know, I was ready to take my life. I was ready to commit suicide, not knowing what I'm, why I'm doing it. And when I asked myself, my husband is the best, my children are the best, my family is the best, work was amazing, everything was brilliant. And yet I felt like, no, I don't want to live. This is not good. You know, I went up, the, so in Delhi NCR, we have something called Suraj Kun. They had very high rise apartments being made. I think about the 18th, 20th floor. It was in, in construction. I told the man, I want to buy the entire floor. Seeing my car and me, he said, okay, okay, come, I'll show you. And I was ready to jump down and I realized, no, I can't do this to this guard bhaiya, which are itne old and kyo pe jayega, ka kuch ho gaya to. And ghar pe, I, I, I was a very strong fall of gratitude. I still have a gratitude jar on my bedside. So I had written gratitude jars for everyone I loved, about 20 of them I'd left on my table with messages and everything for them, for my daughters, for my sisters, for everyone possible. At times you feel useless in life. If you do that, if you have felt it, Welcome to the world of abundance, because that is a shift where you realize that this is not going to be. And sometimes the shift is important. That shift is important. That time I told myself, I am eternal life. I will not take my life. And I just went to the, and I was driving aimlessly. I love driving. So I was driving aimlessly and my car stopped at Chhatarpur in one of the Vipashna center. So I was like, you know, and I just went inside. They're like, no, the office is in Nehru Place. I drove to office in Nehru Place. And they were like, no, we can't take you the next three months. I said, okay, I'm going to jump down if you don't take me now. So that's the kind of impulsive person. I mean, that's the kind of thing I told him. And next day, it was new batch was starting. And I just went home. And mama had seen all the kachra I had done. She, she called me, where are you? Where are you? Come types. I went back as a mom tomorrow. morning with Vipashna. No questions asked. Uh, Tavishi must, it was, this is 2016. So she told ma, ma uh, she told Dadi, Mama's going for 11 days, Vapis ni aegi, vahi 11 days raegi. These people were procrastinating, a jaegi, nahi jaegi. So that time I told myself, I am the truth and I'm going to find my presence, my truth. And I found it. So in life, if you're shaken by knocks and shocks of life, whether it's in uh, the power book they call PETs, personal emotional trainers, such people come to challenge you and they are to be thankful. Now, I really thank those five ladies to make life hell for me then. If they hadn't done that, I wouldn't have had a magical presidential year. So sometimes people come to challenge us. But if we accept them, embrace them and tell ourselves that I am eternal life, I am within me, I am here, I am now, and I'm unshakable, then so it is. That's very, very, very important. Let's have a moment of silence on this beautiful note.
I am eternal consciousness. I'm eternal life. I am love. I am light. I'm blessed. And I'm very sure that humanity is going through ascension. And so it is. Yes, Sanya, you can continue. Never personalize Christ. Don't make Christ into a form identity, avatars, divine mothers, enlightened masters, the very few that are real, <clears throat> are not special as persons. Without a false self to uphold, defend and feed, they are more simple, more ordinary than the ordinary man or woman. Anyone with a strong ego would regard them as insignificant or more likely not see them at all. So again, very important to understand that we're not supposed to identify anybody with anything. We all are divine, right? So of course, we get enlightened masters, we get divine mothers, we get avatars, we get so many people in our life, but they are not so special to be put them on a pedestal. So don't have these false images of them. Don't feed it so much in your mind. Everyone's ordinary, everyone's extraordinary. So again, don't attach ego to it. Just be selfless. Just if you become one, just be selfless. Just and be the light for some people. And just and then don't say, they don't have that ego. All of us are channels. So my nitya says. May we be the channels of blessings for someone today. Let us be the channels for blessings. Let us be channels for love and light. And let's not have this egoic, egoistic mind. What is ego? It's in the conscious mind. So just drop it. And believe me, dropping ego is such an easy, easy thing. People who start saying sorry easily are dropping ego. So if you're not a sorry sayer, probably become sorry. So I say now sorry for the last few years like this. Meri galti hai, nahi hai, doesn't matter. If you are hurt, I'm sorry. Whether my intention was correct or not, I'm sorry. And that is when you're dropping your ego bit, bit, bit by bit. Yes, let's see the next paragraph, please. If you are drawn to an enlightened teacher, it is because there is already enough presence in you to recognize presence in another. There were many people who did not recognize Jesus or the Buddha as there, were, there are and always have been many people who are drawn to false teachers. Egos are drawn to bigger egos. Darkness cannot recognize light. Only light can recognize light. So don't believe that the light is outside you or that it can only come through one particular form. If your own, only your master is an incarnation of God, then who are you? Any kind of exclusivity is identification with form and identification with form means ego, no matter how well disguised. So beautiful. So if you're saying somebody is light and uh, that, that means you are the light. Why? Because we, when we seeing something in somebody, it's our reflection. We've heard that, right? We've heard that magic book in so many books. Whatever you see in the other person is your own reflection. We've seen that in mirror work as well. So now if you see that that person is light, which means that person is divine, so are you. You can see it. So are you. Now if you think that person is a divine child, is an incarnation of God, so are you. Because you can see that person like, you can see him like that. So don't get in the exclusivity culture. Just know one thing, we are all in this together and there's nothing called a form, there's nothing called ego. We are all well, we are all well in this together. That's about it. Yes, please. Group work. Sorry. No, no, use, use the, the master's word. presence to reflect your own identity beyond name and form back to you and to become more intensely present yourself. You will soon realize that there is no mine or yours in presence. Presence is one. How beautiful. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, what does master mean here? I am a master, you're a master, everyone is a master. Anybody who's talking goodness, whether it's a beggar on the street, is also a master. So now use a master's presence to reflect your own identity beyond name and form back to you and to become more intensely present yourself. Very simply, just learn to identify with goodness, 
see that in people see that in yourself and be present to it that's it once you see goodness you see love you see light you will realize mera tera kuch nahi hota it's all one and that oneness is beautiful and i'm sure this oneness is something we'll experience in miracles i can already feel the vibes because all of us are resonating at such higher frequency and when we come together the collective energy of the place is going to be absolutely amazing i feel the energy through a zoom session so imagine that physical energy wow that place is going to be really rocking now we're talking about group work something to take away uh, learn further yes group work can also be helpful for intensifying the light of your presence a group of people coming together in a state of presence generates a collective energy field of great intensity it not only raises the degree of presence in each member of the group but also helps to free the collective human consciousness from its current state of mind dominance this will make the state of presence increasingly more accessible to individuals however unless at least one member of the group is already firmly established in it and thus can hold the energy frequency of that state the egoic mind can easily reassert itself and sabotage the group's endeavors although group work is invaluable it is not enough and you must not come to depend on it nor must you come to depend on a teacher or a master except during the transitional period when you are learning the meaning and practice of presence isn't this beautiful an app for all of us as if it's written for all of us so again we are raising very high frequency we are amazing we are resonating in it amazing and if even one person is breaking the chain of frequency the entire thing can get sabotaged which is the reason they say don't depend too much on a group don't depend because now the thing about in person in physical thing is now here if the group energy of somebody is negative somebody is yawning sleeping you know whatever so it's okay it's only you can't hear you can't see imagine somebody is doing on a group where everyone can see each other one yawn will trigger off 20 yawns so that's why they say don't depend upon group it's great if you all on a high re- uh, frequency but if you're not don't and they're saying don't depend that that's why so i'll take it on me right now just because i'm the seeker who's talking so you mustn't depend upon a seeker except during the transitional period so all of you firstly you all are spiritual beings that's why you're here that's why you made the 60 100 day mark now learn the meaning of what you are going through in this transitional journey in this transformational journey and practice your presence don't become dependent on it so you know many of you are like you know hum to life long ki session karne wale hain aapke sath you know i feel okay if you want to do and read books and you want to come great but don't make yourself adheen of me and my sessions i am in a journey i will always be in this journey god willing i'll always be in this journey but that doesn't mean you should become so used to it and of course if you think you need conditioning and you want another repeat of something go for it i'm not even stopping you who am i to stop you but all i'm saying is don't become dependent become dependent only on your emotions in fact i mean on on your higher self not on anybody else and that too don't become dependent on your higher self start listening to your higher self tomorrow we'll talk about a beautiful chapter the inner body and uh, so it's going to be even more profound now the book in today on this day 100 is coming towards the most important section this chapter 6 coming up tomorrow tomorrow is day number 101 and here you start even a more deeper study but the main study has gotten over so na- chapter 5 we went bit by bit by bit because it was we were reading every line understanding the best part about this book is now the second part of the book is it's super easy all of us can understand because now we've done the main part so the explanations will be lesser however if you want them to be more i'm always here i'm always here for everyone so get this very clear now we that's why i'm saying if all of us can tell our sangha who's kind of gone on the back seat ki unhone agar nahi kiya hai just say apne agar 100 days nahi bhi kiya for some reason come for the last 21 days these three weeks are very very important and i request <clears throat> and if you have family members who want to come for it please invite them it doesn't matter aapki window mein to aa rahe 
हाउ डज ए मैटर मैंने कई बार पहले भी बोला था इनफैक्ट आपके पार्टनर्स को बुला लो तो नथिंग लाइक इट but of course it's it's just now that we are going to be doing inner body we're going to be talking about other stuff so thank you so much uh, rahul sir for showcasing this now you can bring on the camera on a gallery mode i'm going to talk to my friends my sangha about the ikigai so what is happening we've had five days out of this four days we've done about ikigai we first day we journaled what we love second day we journaled what are we good at third day we journaled what is it that i can get money with the fourth day we wrote what is it that the world needs could be my mission how far are we in this so i will not take uh, i mean because i don't get any answers at times i don't know how far are we in this my idea to do this was a short uh, things that all of us who've missed out the bus initially who trying to gather it would have done it so you got it okay ritu great you got it so just ritu's answer came nonetheless which is not so great but okay for everyone who's got it amazing yes nehal you want to share something how wonderful uh good morning everyone good morning prachi thank you for this so yes uh, i see that there was a pause fan nehal fan ban karogi oh yes so sorry yeah रवि जी स्टिल फिगरिंग आउट फिगर करने की जरूरत ही नहीं है अपने मन से जो आएगा वो लिखना है आपको फिगर आउट मत करिए फिगर आउट नहीं करना है सिर्फ चारों चीज लिखना है आपको जो मन से आ रहा है अबाउट इट यस नेहल प्लीज कंटिन्यू सो यस इट हैज बीन अ वंडरफुल जर्नी एंड वी आर कम्प्लीटिंग दंड्रेड डे एंड इट्स द बेस्ट डे टू शेयर सो एज आई इनफॉर्म दैट आई वॉज टीचिंग फॉर टेन ईयर्स इन अंटेसरी स्कूल and um, then i realized that i really love working with the children and that is uh, because you know how much ever i would be uh, stressed or uh, i would uh, be cribbing about the whole uh, routine but whenever i see the smiles on their faces it just lifts me up and i love being with them and uh, of course i was working in a job where i was uh, first as a teacher then i was looking into the admin and everything that was bored so i thought of designing my own courses and um, i started with my own personal classes but that time i was uh, it i there was a fear that uh, you know where's the financial stability because uh, if you don't have a fixed job the monthly salary is not going to come and there was always this fear so i had joined another job uh, side by side when i was designing my own classes for the children and for a year i was taking my own classes Uh, when we started this journey i always had this at the back of my mind that i should be doing something of my own because i'm good at creating and if i'm creating the quality that i deliver is not when i give it to somebody else and they take the classes so uh, i just resigned from my job like last week oh, and uh, spoke about yeah. it so glad you've taken the yes. amazing okay yes and when i realize that i uh, i love interacting so that is something which i have uh, i really uh, my interpersonal skills and my communication with people is good because i always talk to them and when i'm talking the time absolutely stops <laughs> i'm also good at listening so i always wanted to you know coach people and uh, coach in the field where the children are involved not like a proper life coach yes. or something but of course yeah, yeah. so um, so while i'm designing and structuring my own classes and uh, doing my own uh, you know that is going well for almost like 6 7 months now and i've come up with new courses now where of course this learning has helped me a lot i have designed a course for children uh, from 4 year olds to 9 year olds where i would be teaching them life skills and uh, i'll be teaching them the power of gratitude thank you to you to introducing me to this world and uh, i am going to introduce them to uh, you know uh, learn about breathing techniques how to handle their anger all of it and uh, i think you froze nehal okay so you frozen so it's amazing that she's come to this point now and i can tell i told her this a month ago that her money will only go to the next 4 5 6 triple levels just salary milreti was not even a patch on what she's doing and this girl will share again in a couple of months and wait and watch she'd have taken leaps and bounds and she would have become a very beautiful place to 
for children to be going because that's how she's going to be creating. So more power to her. She's I've been working with her. I'm so 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 happy she's reached this point. So more power to her. Amazing. So until she comes back, so let me just share one thing with all of you that we've talked about ikigai. Very important. These four things that we just journal. If we journal, we'll definitely find our calling. And if we find a calling, it's we couldn't be expanding on it. So she found a calling like a year ago because of financial pressure and whatever family, she could not do it. Finally, this book helped her nudge herself. So this book is very beautiful. Please find time to do this book. So four things we're talking about here, which are the defining lines of um, how life is. Now I want to bring the most important part to you, which is also in alignment with Lou Patino was telling us. So remember, we spoke about the five blue zones where people are living as super centenarians, like, you know, 100 plus or centenarians and 110 plus super centenarians. Now, if I'm not saying you all have an ambition to live, Prashant, and I have 100 more years to go. So I'll be 143, he'll be 146 when he goes. So yes, we have ambition and we are working on it. So, and I know that a lot of Sangha first batch so promised me, Kere, hum to aapke hai. Rajni Maheshwari included. So I know, but usme one thing is there that 80% secret which we read about. Please finish your meal when you think you're getting full. Jage hai khane ki, man hai khane ka, but full ho rahe hai. Stop there. Chewing is an art, very important for us to chew our food. If you're not chewing, yes, please start chewing now. Kuldeep ji is a huge inspiration in that world. And then start eating a little lesser. Trust me, the body doesn't need so much of food. I'm not saying go off your... Uh, like Nitin Chopra and Prashant Agarwal love their basi khana. So yeah, I'm not saying go off that. You want to have food with a food without pran? <laughs> go for it. Enjoy, have a life. But start eating 80%. Even if you're having unhealthy food, don't go up till here. My husband says, Asta bohat I'm like, yeah, I know. That's because you're so fond of eating, you're eating. And I say, where is the food go? Yeah, you're so thin. So yeah, his BMR is amazing. But I'm trying to say that if you really, truly want to have a life of substance, I'm not saying go off 100%, uh, 100 years of age. But if you really want to become spiritual, and I mean spiritual means that you know your businesses will be the next level, your endeavors will be the next level, your body will be the next level, your mind will be the next level, you have to keep 80% rule as a lifeline. Do not go beyond 80%. Just talk, halt. There's a science which says 20 minutes pe khana khate uske baad khane ki zarurat nahi padti ab wo 20 minute mein one palta kha rahe ho ki one parantha ya char parantha depends upon you so chewing is important mindful eating is important heartfulness is important energizing your food is important if you haven't yet begun to do a pranam or a prayer or say grace before your meal start it now so that is very important to first acknowledge the food chain that brings the food to you and then acknowledge the food and then energize, if possible, a little water. And then eat your meal. Please get in this practice. Believe me, your, your transformation will happen then. When you are eating mindfully, with attitude of gratitude, and 80% you will be the next level spirituality. And I'm not saying religion. I'm not talking about religion at all. I'm talking about spirituality. Now you all know in 100 days. So more power to each one of us. Second step, create a Sangha. Whether like, you know, we have this G4 group from first Sangha. They're a close-knit family now. It's got Anika Kapahi. It's got Monish, Bans, uh, Monish uh, Sanjeti. It's got uh, Sapna. It's got Minakshi. And it's got... How can I forget? So, okay, somebody tell me who's the fifth. I forgot. Reena. Reena Singhania. So these five people did not know each other from Adams. Na to RJ ka background tha, na kuch tha, nothing. And they become one tight family. I can't tell you what they've become. When one person's Sapna was down with COVID, they were entertaining her in the hospital through their mobile phones. They got her out of it. When Monish's brother got married, one of them is designing clothes and selling so much. One's become like a, I can't tell you the camaraderie. A moai is what they say in Japanese. In Buddhism, we say Sangha, and I believe in Buddhism, so I said Sangha. Create a Sangha. Now, if you think at this 100-point journey, that say, Niti Chopra feels, Me too and Bhuvan are my tribe, or Shelly is my tribe, or Pratima ji is my tribe. Make a Sangha. You're free to do that. You have the numbers, make, but don't make it too big. Four, five, six, seven people at max. 
जहां आठ दस हो जाओगे डायल्यूट कर दो उसको सेवन इज अ नंबर ऑफ चक्रास वी हैव फिक्स थ्रू सेवन choose your people make a sangha of course now I, if you add me i mean want to leave the group because i may not be able to add value so i'll say no boss it's not going to be so i may quit the group so now please create your muais your sanghas who are going to be your accountability partners ki meditation kare ki nahi you know 80% khana khaya ki nahi manifestation kare ki nahi because ye course khatam ho raha hai lekin aapko ek chahiye sangha jo aap join kar rahe ho for the third batch Fine, you are then you are on the journey. Then you don't need it. People who are not going to join, please create the sangha for yourself. Create the muay for yourself because you need accountability. I am telling you, there's a difference in my uh, studying in uh, from the first and second. First, I was part of a sangha. Second, I chose not to be one. Utna sincerity nahi hota, especially reflections me. Affirmations ho jaate hain, gratitude ho jaata hai, hamesha. But reflections nahi ho paate. Because me baapas jo padha hai maine. मैं नहीं लिख पाती आई एम नॉट गिविंग प्रायोरिटी बट इफ आई एम पार्ट ऑफ संगा समबडी विल प्राची वेर इज रिफ्लेक्शन सो प्लीज डू दैट दैट्स अबाउट ऑल फॉर टुडे एंड वील टॉक अबाउट इक गाय अगेन टुमोरो अबाउट समथिंग मोर सो ट्राई एंड अडॉप्ट योर सेल्फ इन टू दिस ब्यूटिफुल वर्ल्ड एंड चैली इफ यू वॉन्ट वन संग क्रिएटेड यू नो हू द पीपल आर यू वॉन्ट की एंड कीप इट मिक्सड डोंट बिकम टू फेमिलियर फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू फेमिलियर विद द फर्स्ट संगा एंड सम बैच रूम इंटरेक्शन नहीं भी हुआ Add them. Abhi nahi karna to retreat ke baad kar lo. In fact, make your friends there if you're coming. Whoever is coming, if you like each other's vibes there, then make it. Hu hu ha ha club mat banana. Wo wo bhi zaruri hai. Let that be extra. The muay is not hu hu ha club. It's not a poker club. It's not a uh, you know some a different club. This is your tribe. People that you choose. So please be very selective. Be very careful. Be very mindful. If you've met your higher self. even get guidance from the higher self because it's very important to be in the right sangha right company right moai so thank you everyone so, uh, so, uh, sorry rahul sir let's have the heart thought for the day please and i will be meditating on the heart thought only for about 5 6 minutes so yes the chapters the book is coming to a very uh, uh, the course coming to a conclusion in a way so it's very beautifully unfolding now in fact that's why i'm saying if your team members have stopped coming time to bring them up now because now we're going to be doing a crash course in our, into our learnings ikigai other books we'll be just picking up things and doing it so okay uh, okay for tomorrow or uh, rahul sir we are missing the heart thought footer maybe we'll try and do something uh, it's on the very working in your ppt i'm sure it'll work tomorrow onwards so resentment resentment is the worst we can do to ourselves i am a product of resentment that's the reason at 30 years of age after being so accomplished in professional life personal life yet i had cancer why resented so many things criticized so many things did not see the blessings and then self inflicted misery guilt fear blame game not being responsible for yourself and then something like cancer can also manifest so today is about resentment i am motivated by love resentment criticism guilt and fear come from blaming others and not taking responsibility for our own experiences so what are our own experiences each one of us whatever we are going through we need the experience so the experience is coming to us don't think ki isne aisa bola to ye aisa ho gaya aisa nahi hona chahiye tha aapne kahin na kahin manifest kiya tha zarurat thi to experience aaya hai aapki life mein now don't complain and blame आपने पेरेंट्स चूज किए थे टू कम एंड बीइंग बोर्न इन दिस फैमिली नाउ द पेरेंट्स मे हैव लेफ्ट मदर अर्थ बट नाउ यू इफ यू आर कंप्लेनिंग कि ओ माय मदर माय फादर हैज गॉन आई एम नॉट कनेक्टेड ऐसा क्यों हुआ सो प्लीज लर्न असेंशन हो रहा है इट्स ओके एंड यू कैन सी योर मदर योर फादर इन अ लिटिल टाइम प्लीज कनेक्ट विद मी इफ यू वांट एम दिस आई एम टॉकिंग टू अजय स्पेशली अजय इफ यू थिंक यू नीड इट प्लीज आई एम हियर I have lost my brother. I also can feel my brother. Connect with me. I'm going to put you to the right people, and you will be able to meet your mother very easily. And it, there will come a time when you won't even need channels. You will just be able to meet her whenever you want. Just the way you meet your higher self, our loved ones are always around us. Physically, we can't hug them, but spiritually, they are around us. So get this very clear. And if you have been very upset, which is natural, please learn. that this is a process of life right nothing is eternal life is eternal mama will be reborn as a mother person she could be reborn in your life if she is soulmate as your grandchild you never know 
So please be ready to embrace the change. So let's go with it. And today let's read about I'm motivated by love. So yes. Can we please, uh, okay, let me read this. Let me read this and let me guide this. In fact, let me do a meditation on this. Is that okay if I intertwine these words into meditation? So that'll be even better. If everyone's okay, please let me know. Rather than reading it like this, let me read it in a meditation way. It'll be more deeper in impact for all of us. So let this window be here. Thank you. Take a deep breath in after you check your postures. Your stomach will expand. Take a deep breath in full of love. Exhale love and share with the world. Inhale love once again. Fill yourself up with love to the brim. Exhale love by sharing with whoever, wherever, however. Third time for this morning and the last time. Inhale love, fill yourself deeply, deeply fill it yourself. Feel the love entering your body, pulsating in your body. Gently exhale it. Let your stomach go in as much as possible. Shower out any air which is trapped. I flow in love. Life is love. Life is love. Life is love. I am motivated by love. Because I am love. I am light. I am abundance. I, I am ready to release from deep within me all bitterness, all resentment. I am detoxed of all this. Could be negativity, whatever I feel. No more, none so ever. I affirm that I'm totally willing to forgive myself freely, to forgive everyone other freely, because I am meant for giving, for giving love. If I am born to give love, to, if I'm born for giving love, then why can't I forgive love to myself? Why can't I forgive love to the others? I forgive everyone. If I think of anyone who may have harmed me in any way at any point in my life, I now bless that person with love. Love, light and blessings to you, my loved one. You may have done whatever you have done to me, but may you rise and shine. I forgive you. I forgive you completely and I release you because you are worth loving. You deserve love and I forgive love. I am meant for giving love and I give it to you so openly. And I let this case be. I just forget about it because I released it. I know nobody can take anything from me which is rightfully mine. No, never, no one. Things which are taken away from me were never mine. I know that by now. And I've stopped complaining, stopped criticizing. What belongs to me will always come back to me because the right divine order will bring it back to me. It could be a loved one I've lost. The loved one will come back to me because that's a divine way. It could be a lost property. It could be a lost relationship. I know if I lose something and if it's mine, it's going to come back. So I set it free. I no longer latch on, no longer. I'm so, I'm not so possessive anymore. I let go. I just simply flow. 
if something doesn't come back to me, it's not meant to come back to me because that's how the process of life is. And I believe it, I accept it without grievance, without resentment, because I am love. I accept all of life with peace and love and joy. Now that I'm flowing in love, where is the resentment? It's completely dissolved, infinito, it's gone. I trust myself. I know I'm safe. I am motivated by love. And so it is. I am love. I am light. Let's bow down our heads in gratitude towards Mother Earth. So you can just remove the page gallery, you can come. Let's bless our Mother Earth today for a change. Bless her for her ascension of the earthly beings to go higher and higher. Dear Mother Earth, I bless you and all the beings in you to embrace higher consciousness, higher energy, vibrate at higher frequency. Dear Mother Earth, thank you for being a giver. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear life, thank you for treating me so beautifully. Now I know all the downs were so important for my state of mind. Thank you for the knocks and shocks of life. I embrace them today. And I release all resentment, all guilt, all fear so easily. Because now I'm flowing in love. My past was wonderful. My present is magical. And my future is going to be absolutely breathtaking. It's going to be awe-inspiring because I believe in myself and my own journey. I trust the process of life. I trust in myself. That's what it is. Let's open our hands up to the universe above, heavens above. Dear heavens, Thank you for showering me with the choices of blessings by the heavenly, celestial angels, bodies, divinity, ascended masters, gurus in this realm or the others. To all the divinity, thank you so much for showering us with choices best. Thank you angels for guiding us, showing us you exist. Thank you guardians for always guarding us with all your might. Thank you cosmos for including us in your leela. Thank you, universe, for having our back. We're truly the blessed Sangha. Now let's expand our angel heart by facing your hands to the heavens above. I am love. I flow in love. I am light. I share my light. I am abundant. I live abundantly in all realms. Wherever I turn, prosperity follows. I am open and receptive to all the love, goodness, and abundance from all universes because I am love. And so it is. Let's fold our hands in gratitude. Let's be grateful for everything from heavens above to the earth below. Now rub our hands in gratitude again. See the energy flow, the warmth. Let's bless our conscious subconscious mind for restructuring, reprogramming, unlearning, and learning. Let's bless our face. Thank our eyes for seeing the world beautifully. Ears for hearing all things beautiful and wonderful. Mouth for speaking only out of love. Nose for smelling, sensing, feeling. All things love-filled. The feel of touch, it's love and light neck, esophagus for taking in spiritual energy, shoulders for shrugging off all excess weight and responsibilities and duties. I am free. Arms, upper back, middle back, lower back, hips, shoulders again, chest, lungs,
sexual organs, excretory organs, eyes, knees, calves, ankles, sole of our feet. These are growing in mother of two finger nails and once back up, hands folded. Dearest, magical, beautiful body, you're the only place I live in and you are so fair to me. You have worked on your optimal best. I may have abused you, but yet you've continued all the beautiful processes. Thank you to trillions of cells in my body which are listening to me right now. I love you. Thank you to the 100,000 kilometers of blood circulation system. Thank you for flowing. To the bones that connect me, thank you. The muscles, tissues, fibers, glands, thank you for your functioning. To the skin protection layer, thank you. And to the beautiful energy that flows in me, I invoke it to share my loved Sangha Mitras, their loved ones, and all beings on Mother Earth. Let us all find the light. Love, light, blessings, and abundance to you, Parishma, Ajay, Anju, Rigu, Naveen, San Sanya, Shubhra, Mitu, Bhuvan, Kitendraji, Prashant, Yanji, Ushaji, Sapna, Shelly, Mudita, Prachi, Kripa, Richa, Archna, Shami, Ankur, Puna, Nitin, Hina, Pratimaji, Ritu, Nisha, Selesh, Alona, Rajiv, Payal, Parul, Radhika, Sakshi, Asmi, Siddharth, Vandana, Sakshi Mathur, Prima, Pina, Sunita, Mom, Akshay, Ankita, Chandra, Nihal, Shruti, Richa, Minakshi, Shivani, Amit, Neha, Akshay, Rohini, Ritesh Sir, Rahul Sir, Born One to One for Life, Kavita Kuthari, Monica Agnihotri, Ravi Gulgulia, Parul Chavla, Meg Agarwal, Kavita Kuthari, Neha Sethi, Richa Sachdev. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Sunita, I think I missed. And Nehal. Lots of love, light to each one of you. I'm very, very, very happy to share that, share that Alona has been messaging me uh, the increasing, ever increasing list of miracles. So a big shout of thanks to Alona and Selesh for doing this for all of us, for, you know, unabashedly, for unconditionally giving us this kind of love. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the new registrations. I love it when I see such the family has grown. Thank you, Gyanji, Usharji, for registering. Shelly, Asmeet, with your family. Can't wait to see you all. Bhad Bhai and your wife. So how wonderful. Looking forward to seeing all of you. And the others, of course, who registered. I've been thanking you. So more power to everyone. Keep registering until we are house full. And let's have a full house full of positivity, full of vibes, and full of energy. So thank you, everyone. And thank you, Rahul, for doing it so beautifully for us. And thank you, Ritesh, sir, for hand-holding all of us. Thank you, Shweta, for your continued support. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. A big shout of thanks to Amrita and to Sanjay, sir, for always having my back. God bless you all. Stay safe, stay in love. Today is all about love. That's what we read. So more power to us. Thank you. Lots of love.